I'm amazed. Uh, I, I've still got some wine left. So, you know, I left um, with, uh, with a three litre bag. Uh, you know, it's like, the, you know, a bag of wine that you get from the supermarket. Um, it's obviously bottles, just absolutely no way, you know. And um, yeah, I mean, it's really filthy now. It's so disgusting. Um, but yeah, there's a little bit left. There's like probably like a glass left. And uh, that's not bad, man, for eight days. You know, normally, um, yeah, you know, I normally drink a lot more than that, let's just say. Uh, and, uh, I, I did run out of whiskey last night, finally. Uh, but I mean, there's only like, you know, there's only that little flask worth. So, I mean, when I finish it, at the, you know, at the end of the night, I'm, I just conk out straight away. And don't really sit around like, you know, boozing and what do I do? I like to sing campfire songs to myself, you know. <laughs> Lock gate stuck, but Ooh. let's go. get through. Please don't close it. Uh, uh. I think the sluice is operating. Oof. Stop for lunch, I think. I left Cliveden uh, at eight o'clock this morning. I've been paddling non stop since it's now, God, it's gone two o'clock. And uh, oh, God, it's getting really starting to flake out a bit. Yeah, I was like falling asleep at the paddle pretty much. So I'm um, stopping at Running Mead for some uh, lovely fish and chips. So uh, that there is Chertsey campsite. Now, that is the last place that you can camp. Uh, on the Thames before going into London. Um, so uh, yeah, there's certainly no wild camping you can do past this point. Uh, you'll just get uh, picked up by the police, you know. Um, but yeah, I've never stayed there, but um, apparently it's a really good campsite. Uh, and you can, you know, put in and put out straight from the river into the campsite and everything. So uh, yeah, that's where you that's where you want to stay if you're heading down this way. Uh, I think if you were going to continue the downstream from here, you're looking at hostels and hotels. neighborhood so uh, I'm gonna go home get out of these clothes get, get them washed get a nice hot a shower 
for the first time in uh, over a week and um, yeah some hot food I might treat myself to a top shelf bottle of wine the final bit I'll just do the kayak to put me and then uh, hike the rest you know finish as I began and uh, yeah tie it off nicely so the car's all right good Thank God for that, I was, I was nervous about that. some lunch and uh, I bought a little packed lunch but um, I could uh, treat myself to an ice cream such a lovely day so now I'm about to go on to tidal Thames and um, yeah I'm a little bit apprehensive to be honest so I've never really kayaked on the, on the tidal Thames and um, it is a bit of a different um, ball game really the, um, you know, the currents the undercurrents the eddies all of that it's a lot, lot stronger you know, it's much more faster flowing river so much bigger wider there's more wind um, so they're different conditions. Then there's the tidal force itself as well, um, which but that can sometimes be a help. It could also be a hindrance. You know, it depends what time, what direction you're going. Another thing about tidal Thames is uh, there are many access points, and they do say that you know once you get on it, it can be very difficult to get off. So coming up to um, Richmond Half Lock. And it looks like the tide is out. I think there, is, there are some boat rollers over here. When the tide's in, boats can just pass under the bridge as normal. Now it's out. So you've got these gates there. And they have to use the lock. But I should be able to just portage on these boat rollers. So slippery and muddy here. Be very slow and careful. Ooh. Something I haven't really seen much of on the, the non-tidal te tidal Thames is mud. I've got a feeling this might be a bit of a feature of the tidal Thames. Be careful where I land if I have to land. There we go. Through. Now on the tidal river Thames. Quite shallow here. Look at that. Wasn't expecting that. anything about as well there's no boats um, a couple of stand-up paddle boards I think down there but um, yeah it's, it's like it's weird I, you'd think you'd go in more into the city into the built-up area there'd be more activity but it's sort of quite the opposite really it's kind of open and wild a lot of seagulls Funnily enough, um, this stretch of the Thames uh, is on land, like probably the, the bit that I'm most familiar with. So Twickenham, Richmond, Chiswick, Putney, Fulham, these are all you know, places that I've lived. So I know it really well, but I've never actually kayaked it before. the tide coming in definitely like feel like I'm pushing against the water uh, gonna take more um, painkillers
when you think of like you know being on a river you float down a river you know you go down with the current you know flowing towards the sea but like look at this tidal flood like ah oh, god i'm really pushing as well barely moving it's like running on the spot Oof. You know you're in Putney when you start seeing people in salmon pink shorts. I think Putney was like just the right place to uh, conclude the kind of kayaking section of the trail, uh, just because I know my own limits of you know, kayak ability, plus the limitations of the kayak I've got. Um, I, any further would start again dangerous, you know, any, any further than Putney Bridge, like no way, because the, you know, the, the river, the tidal river is just a different beast. You can really feel it, you know, the power of the water and the currents and um, yeah, it's pretty, pretty full on. Uh, it's very windy, it's very choppy and there's, um, you know, quite fast boats um, speeding past and you get knocked side to side with a wash and there aren't any really rules down here, do you know what I mean? So, you know, <laughs> they're entitled to do it. Um, so I think um, this is exactly the right uh, place to, um, yeah, to finish up with the, uh, with the boating and then, um, yeah, crack on tomorrow on foot. So um, it's basically, in Putney, it's considered very rude if you're passing through and you don't stop off for a pint the half moon. So last day today, I'm gonna walk from Putney to the Thames Barrier. I reckon it's gonna take me about five hours. It would be nice to do the rest of it in the kayak, but it, it, it really isn't uh, safe to be doing that solo. And um, my, my back is, I was just had enough now. <laughs> so I'm actually, I'm quite happy to do the rest of this on foot. And um, it kind of bookends quite nicely with the, you know, the beginning of the, of the trail, which you know, the, the day one was a hike day, you know, and, um, and today, day 10, the final day is gonna be a hike day. I've got no uh, route plan or anything like that. I'm just gonna follow the Thames path signs, which is exactly what I did right at the beginning. Um, and uh, yeah, just see where it takes me. Take some nice pictures and um, enjoy this final stage. This would have just been a monumental task in the kayak, especially in this heat. Uh, you can see no other watercraft, no stand-up paddles, just nothing. You just got the Port of London Authority boat patrolling. I think even they would have just come up to me in the kayak and said, you know, what are you doing? Uh, you wouldn't be a proper river without some traffic cones, would it? enjoyed the hiking side of this uh, but you know both at the beginning and the end and um, it's like not something I'd, I really normally do you know like a lot of the, the YouTube videos uh, from, from hikers and the guys who do the trails and stuff uh, have been like really relevant and useful uh, for preparing for something like this um, and we you know, use a lot of the same kit and some camping gear and stuff so uh, yeah it is something I'm aware of but I, I think I, I would probably be um, up for doing a bit more of it in the future, I think. Stopped in um, Vauxhall for a bit of lunch. The thing about the heat in the city is in the city everything is paved it's all asphalt concrete just stone you know which radiates heat so well 
and um, like so basically my feet are just burning hot it's like I've got hot rocks in my shoes and uh, it doesn't help that they're black as well um, yeah so it's quite funny really I've stopped at Tower Bridge for a, a nice cold beer. It's so hot today, this is so welcome. So I've been in London for like nearly 30 years and uh, you know they say Londoners, they just they don't appreciate what's on the doorstep, they never take advantage of all the um, you know the culture, the history, the museums and you know the, you know, the touristy stuff basically. But I don't know, I think I'm an exception to that rule. I, I always uh, do the touristy thing in London, still do it, it never gets old for me. Um, I work at a lot of the heritage sites, you know, so the museums and galleries and um, some of the, the royal palaces, including the Tower of London there. Um, and uh, yeah, it just uh, still excites me. I, I, I just love the history of it. Totally underestimated how long this walk was from Putney. So what I'm on at, like hour six, uh, 15 miles. But it's been so hot today, it's been well over 36. But uh, getting there. last mile and um, yeah time to reflect on the, like the last 10 days and yeah the whole journey and you know thinking back to that first mile uh, you know when I left the, the stone at the source and um, you know it was like there wasn't even any water then you know it was just a ditch and like you know where like where I'm coming up to now the Thames barrier it's, it's like really proper estuary you know um, it's the sounds of the sea, the seagulls, the waves, the, the ships, yachts everywhere. It's just like, this is mad, Leon, you know, to think of everything that's gone on in between. And, um, and uh, this, is where, this is why the river appeals to me, you know, like a river is just like one big, like living journey. It has a source and then it, you know, it grows and it develops and then, you know, it goes through this journey and it matures and then uh, eventually it, it just goes off into the sea, into eternity, you know. But then the whole cycle starts again. And, um, you know, I love that. Got the Thames barrier, just as the sun is going down. Like, perfect, I couldn't be happier, really. 184 miles, 34 on foot. 150 in the kayak, 10 days, and um, yeah, I've actually really loved every single minute of it. Like, you know, even the stuff, you know, when it went wrong, it was all like part of the fun and the adventure, really. And um, I'm, I, yeah, I'm proud of it, and you know, it's really helped with my mental health and my confidence. And in a year where, like, you know, there's been some sort like, of limbo and, uh, you know, anxiety and, you know, I've had like, you know, a 20 year career just like wiped from under my feet and feeling a bit helpless, you know, and 
uh, I, you know, I felt like I, 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 you know, just achieved something, and uh, I'm just feeling good about myself. One thing I forgot today was my hip flask with my whiskey in it because like, I think the whole point was that I was going to have a, like a nip at the source and then a nip here at the Thames Barrier. I've ruined it now, I've completely ruined the entire trip. Um, I'm probably just going to have to do the whole thing again.